Good day, mates, and welcome back to the Lumios Outpost, where we talk about all things Pokemon. Today, we're going to slap some shrimp on the Barbie and talk about Australia. Okay, please don't leave. I'll stop. I'll stop. But the point is, today we are going to be talking about Australia. Specifically, I have created an Australian region uh, with the help of of an artist for a few Pokemon, uh, and that is S-E-H Art Gold. He's going to be linked in the description below, and I said his name right here, so check him out. He's on Twitter, uh, so yeah, ab absolutely check him out. I can't wait to showcase his art here. You already saw one in the thumbnail, but yeah, let's first, before we get into this region, talk about the likelihood of Australia for Gen 10. Personally, I don't see a lot pointing to Australia in Gen 10. I'm sure that you could make some fine arguments, but I think there's finer arguments for a return to Asia, um, be it Japan or another uh, part of Asia, or uh, Egypt, or even South America. I'm not seeing a ton of Australian evidence, but I want Australia so bad, and I think we all do. I think the biggest piece of evidence for Australia is actually how bad fans want Australia. And this has been a thing since in Gym 5, we left Japan and started doing regions in not only other countries, but other continents with Unova being set in like a, a Pokemon version of New York. So ever since then, fans have been going nuts and going like, a platypus is already a Pokemon. We need a Australia region. It, it's been a long thing. So I think that, that there is some merit to that. I think that Game Freak has shown time and time again that they do listen to their fans, so I think that's only natural that at some point we'll get our Australia region. So yeah, why the heck can't it be Gen 10? It's supposed to be a big region. Why not give probably the fan favorite region, like in terms of what fans most want to be a region, why, why not make it a true thing, you know? Make, turn that dream into a reality. So uh, yeah, let, let's go ahead and get into this Australia region. I am stoked. All right, so let's talk Australia. This is, oh man, I am so excited for this. Crikey, some might say, please don't leave. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a long one because this is a long slideshow, even longer than my canvas region, if you have uh, seen that, um, which was on the Netherlands. But yeah, I'm really excited for this. Uh, I encourage you to sit through the whole video. If you can't finish it all, stop it and come back don't just stop it and leave this is going to be so fun i'm really proud of these ideas so the consora region is what we're calling this region it's a region created by me the lumios post featuring art by seh underscore art gold again check him out please okay so just some information that we need to know about this region consora is coming from the word conservation as conservation will be a really important theme in this region so in past Pokemon games, this is nothing new. There are like little themes in there, right? Like I think a great example is how in the Kalos region, uh, Kalos is actually like an ancient Greek word that means beauty. And the Kalos region has a ton of beauty themes into it. You know, not only does the region allow you to like sit on a bench so you can get like a different view of the city and things like uh, being able to take pictures all over the place and even kind of change the way the picture looks a little bit, uh, trainer PR videos, and of course character customization. It was a big theme, beauty, fashion, all that. Uh, so likewise, I think conservation will be a really good fit for Australia. Yeah, I mean, this is just a given. So once again, special thanks to SEH Art Gold for the art that's in this video. Uh, the games could be just an idea of my head uh, is Pokemon Sea and Pokemon Sky or Pokemon Seas and Pokemon Skies. Uh, I, I think I like Seas and Skies better if I'm honest. So I'm thinking that the number of new Pokemon will be about 98 in the base game. There is DLC and we'll get to that in a bit, but don't worry about that right now. 98 new Pokemon in the base game. Uh, that is including 46 new lines, one new convergent evolution, or, or form rather, uh, so that's your thing like Poltergeist or Toad School, six new cross gen evos, that's your Annihilates and Electivires, and three new regional evos. That's a Pokemon that got regional form and gets a new evolution that didn't have before, so things like Sneasler or Surfetched. So the number of regional forms are 14, nine lines, uh, then number of other forms, we'll get to that in a bit, is one Pokemon and one line. Uh, and what I mean by other forms is think kind of like Blood Moon or Saluna. There's a list of like the number of types e this time around. As you can see, there's a lot of poison types because Australia, everything's freaking venomous. Everything wants to kill you. Uh, that's the outside perception of it, at least. So Australians, there's that. This is the map of Kinsora. I made a map. It's not good, but I made it. And you have to live with that. Uh, by the way, there will be a link to this slideshow in the description below, so if you want to click it and follow along with me while I'm reading these out, uh, or just check it out yourself, you know, after the video or whatever, go for it. 
Uh, so the legendary Pokemon, we have... Uh, these are both going to be based on the Rainbow Serpent, which is like an Australian mythological creature. We have Aquas, which is a uh, the Seas Pokemon. It is a Dragon Water type with Marvel Scale, and it will be exclusive to Pokemon Seas. And then we have Skyus, which is the Skies Pokemon, and it will be Dragon Flying with Multi Scale, and it of course is exclusive to Pokemon Skies. Then we have Oweya Town. Oweya Town will be our starting town and is coming from Oasis. I'm going to be completely legit with y'all. I went into the middle of the outback on Google Earth, not literally in real life, and just found a random town. First random town I found was called Heart in the Northern Territory of Australia. And that's what I went with for a starting town. I didn't do that for everything, I swear, but I, I did do it for the starting town, so... Uh, it's a quiet village set up as an oasis to travelers trekking through the Great Consora Wilds. And it connects to the Great Consora Wilds. What's the Great Consora Wilds? Let's find out. So first we're going to meet the professor before we find out what the Great Consora Wilds are. Uh, he is Professor Baobab and he is based on Steve Irwin. And you can laugh if you want. Steve Irwin is genuinely... You can't do a Pokemon game set in Australia and make it about conservation and not have Steve Irwin involved. This man is a legend. I mean, one of the leading uh, pioneers, I guess, in animal conservation. Just loves animals so much. His family's carrying on his tradition. His son looks just like him. It's crazy. Um, and he will also be the champion. So that's, that's something to get to know here. Uh, and it's not unusual for Pokemon to base characters off of real world people uh, a lot of people speculate that professor magnolia is actually based on the queen of england so there's that he's the most powerful trainer in consora and is also the most well-versed in pokemon in the region he studies the relationship between humans and pokemon and how the two can better coexist you come across the professor after he visits your village to give out starter pokemon so he's going to be traveling here to give young trainer starter pokemon so you're going to pick your starter who will your starter be why don't we take a look at them all right, here are the starter Pokemon. Again, art by SEH Art Gold. Check him out. He does commissions. You can pay him money and he'll give you one of these great designs. So there's Ostrula. That is our grass type. Jovire, our fire type. And Catholic, our water type. We'll get into what each of these is based off of. All right, so we have the grass type Pokemon Ostrula. The Marathon Pokemon is a grass type, and as it evolves, it will become grass flying, uh, and it's based on ostrich, which is invasive to Australia. I did not know that, but in doing research for this video, I found out there are ostriches in Australia. So that's fun. Yeah, a whole theme that you're going to see here with the starters is I really like when starters are kind of loosely tied to the region. Like, you can make the connection, but it's not obvious, right? Like, I know that there might be some people that are like, what? The water type starter isn't a platypus and yeah i don't want the water type starter to be a platypus because spoiler alert there is a platypus in this region and i'd rather it be a pokemon i can see in the wild while starter pokemon are typically only given to you like by the professor at the beginning and you won't see them in the wild anywhere so i would rather have our starters be pokemon that are or animals that are loosely connected to australia and save the platypus and the kangaroo and the koala for later on. Yeah, that's right. You're getting all three of those, but that should have been obvious. So uh, his signature move will be called Flight Speed. This is what he'll get upon his final evolution, Ostride. And uh, this is a physical flying type priority move with 50 base power. So pretty strong. It evolves into Ostretch and then Ostride, like I said. Then we have the fire type Pokemon, Jovire. Jovire is based on a Thylacine. A Thylacine is a really cool animal. Uh, basically, they're a marsupial, but it's very canine like in appearance. Uh, and they even kind of call it the Australian tiger. The Tasmanian tiger is kind of another name for it. It is believed to be extinct. Now, I'm going to, this is, when I say believed to be extinct, guys, this is so cool. I'm going to gush about animals in this. So I hope y'all are cool with that. So the cool thing is the thylacine is technically labeled as extinct. However, there are a lot of researchers that are starting to say that they don't think that's true. And in fact, there's a guy named Force Galanti. Maybe you've heard of him. He uh, actually goes around and tries to like find animals that have been declared extinct and prove they're still here. And he actually has been a big advocate for, he really thinks that the thylacine is still out there. I think he specifically thinks it's like in Papua New Guinea or something. But anyways, he, he's wanting to eventually do an expedition. I'm really excited to see that because these are such cool animals. Um, but yeah, it's an extinct marsupial species in Australia. 
extinct. It'll become a fire electric type upon its final evolution, uh, Pyrocene. Its second evolution will be called Fyral. Its signature move will be Lightning Strike, a physical electric priority move with 50 base power. And then we have the water type Pokemon, Catholic. It is the water buffalo Pokemon, as the water buffalo is also an invasive species to Africa, or Africa, excuse me, Australia. It just lives in Africa naturally, but it's here in Australia as an invasive species. Uh, it's going to get Torrent, Kudchu as a hidden ability. It's going to evolve into Buffaleek and then Aqualoo. And its signature move is called Best Offense. And it's a steel type physical move with 80 base power, but it's going to use Aqualoo's uh, defense stat to do damage instead of its attack stat. So it's basically a steel type body press. Let's, let's first, let's admire. So good. So good. Okay, so then we have the Great Consora Wiles. This will be inspired by the Australian Outback, and it's divided into multiple territories. I'm thinking kind of a similar approach to how uh, the Wild Area is in Sword and Shield. You know, it's this big, expansive area. This will be even better, though, and will, like, have different areas in it. Like, there's, like, the Giant's Knee and the Lake of Outrage and... I don't remember many of the other ones. It's been a while since I've played Sword and Shield. But, you know, it's one big area divided into tiny little sections. That's kind of how the Great Consora Wilds will be. And as we will go through them through story is how I'll present the sections on here. So, like, for example, the first one that you'll go to during the story is Territory 1. Obviously, still based on the Australian Outback. They all are. All the Great Consora Wilds are. It's the tamest territory in the Great Consora Wilds. This is the most popular spot for tourists, as it is the least dangerous. It's going to connect to Tor City. Uh, it has a lot of wild Pokemon, some returning ones, as well as some new ones. Specifically that Kikachu, Mytic, Thinktic, Butic, and Hahoot. Oh no! Okay, so a little bit of a problem here. Um, for some reason, some pictures are not loading up in the slideshow. They're working on my laptop, but not on this computer. Uh, it's not all of them. It's actually not many of them. But uh, yeah, if you want to know the animal, I'll let you know what animal it is, and you can Google it. Also, again, if you check out the link in the description below, it'll have the uh, slideshow so you can hopefully see it yourself because, again, it works on my laptop, just not this computer. But yeah, so we have Kikachu which is the leaping Pokemon. It is electric fighting. It is obviously our Pika clone of the region. I don't care that we just got an electric fighting Pika clone. Electric fighting is a cool typing, and so far there's only Pommet and Iron Hands. And also, I don't really like Pommet. Um, so it's electric ty fighting type. Strong legs would be its ability, which basically would be an Iron Fist, but with kicking moves and stuff, punching moves, because it's just unfair that they did that to Hitmonchan, but not Hitmonlee. And again, based on a kangaroo mouse. Then we have Hahu, Hahaf, and Hahau, which is the laughing Pokemon. And it is based on a laughing Kookaburra. It would have Melancholy, which basically makes sound moves become a ghost type. And they have a 15% chance to lower the opponent's speed. It can also get Keen Eye or Prankster, but Melancholy seems pretty cool. And it will be ghost flying. By the way, let me know in the comments below which starter you're picking. And let me know your team as we go along. You know, are you picking up? Ha Howl or Kikachu, or are you picking up any of these three? Oh man, is it going to do that every time I click a page? I don't know, but we're going to deal with it. All right, so we have Mytic, Inane, and Brawlbug, Smartic, and Seti, and Braybug, and Butic, Entine, and um, uh, Bubug, which are, are three regional bugs. I love bug types, and I'm giving us three. So we have Brawlbug, which is based on a Hercules moth. We have uh, Braybug, which is the knowledge Pokemon, and this one will be based on the Ulysses Butterfly, and Bubug, which is the beauty Pokemon, and this will be based on a Painted Lady Butterfly. Uh, and if I am not mistaken, that's the, uh, the, the one missing here is the Hercules Moth, and then the blue one is the Ulysses Butterfly, and then the orange one is the Painted Lady Butterfly. I think that's right. Uh, tried to do them in order that they were presented. But, yeah, I, I really liked that I was just Googling insects that were in Australia. I saw the Hercules moth, and I was like, oh, that'd be a great, you know, strength-related Pokemon. And then I saw Ulysses Butterfly Painted Lady, and I was like, ah, oh, we should do a Brains Bronze Beauty thing. So that's what we're doing with the Ulysses Butterfly, because Ulysses was a philosopher. Being smart, it's the Brains. Hercules moth, Hercules, needs no explanation. It's the strength, the 
you know, uh, the, what is it, Brains, Beauty, Bronze, it's the Bronze, and then uh, we have Bubug is the Beauty. Then we have Tor City. This is based on Roma over in Queensland, Australia. It's a popular city for foreigners. It offers many safari rides and the Great Kinsora Wilds and has many hotels and even a global marketplace. And we're going to talk about that global marketplace. So this is just going to be a, it's based on Roma's farmer markets. Um, it uh, just will have a chance to get unique items. And then I'm also thinking this could be where you, since it's global marketplace, you could also potentially trade uh, with characters to get regional forms from other regions. So like, you know, you can take them uh, Well, I'll, I'll just go ahead and spoil one. Kamala gets a regional form. You can find someone who's willing to trade an Alolan Kamala for your uh, Consoran Kamala. So yeah, it's really cool. You can buy sweets from other regions here too. Lava Cookie, Old Gateau, that kind of stuff. And then the post game, maybe you can get Megalith Stones and legendary items like the Revealed Glass, Grace of Flower, that kind of stuff by here. We have the Tor City Gym. It's a former rock type gym in the Consora Pokemon League. The gym leader is Connor, who just spends his time utilizing the gym building to help train trainers for the Consora League. And his goal is that he wants to one day rejoin the ranks of the league. Because again, he's a former gym leader. So, But to pay the bills right now, he's working as a tour guide. Hopefully, Connor gets a happy ending. Then we have Route 1. This will be called the Cora Free Valley. I wanted to give them another name, kind of like the Kalos region. Uh, it's based on the Lockyer Valley in Queensland, Australia. The beautiful rolling hills and farmlands of Route 1 can make one easily forget that the large Cora Free City is right next to it. You have access to Cora Free Farms here. It connects to Cora Free City. And there's a lot of wild Pokemon you can find here, like Gossiflor, Tauros, Miltank, Yamma, and some new ones. Let's see them. That's okay. So first we have a new evolution for Spydops. This would be called Spy Trap, and it's the trap Pokemon. It is bug normal, and it would get an ability called Venomenon, which gives stab two poison moves, or it can still get stake out. So basically kind of like Delmize rocking the grass ghost typing and getting a move that gives it basically stab to steel types. Spydops would be bug normal, which is what it should have been all along, and we'll get uh, some poison moves that it can get stabbed with it is based on the funnel web spider which is apparently like the most deadly spider ever which you know that's that's uh that's kind of terrifying and it builds like these funnel webs so i thought that worked really well with spider ops since it uses its webs for traps i, I think that's perfect and also spider ops needs it because it is currently garbage that's okay some other new Pokemon, we have Quokib, which evolves into Quokwash. It is the marsupial Pokemon, a normal type just based on a Quokka. Uh, very cute animal. Look it up. Possaway evolves into a Possan, which is the undead Pokemon. It is a normal ghost type. Uh, Play Dead would be its ability, which is just a disguise equivalent to Mimikyu's ability. Basically gets another version of that, and it's based on a Possum. Then you have a Kitty which evolves into Echidna, which is the egg-laying Pokemon. It is normal fairy and is based on an Echidna, which is a mammal that lays eggs. There's your fun fact for the day. We have some two new canine Pokemon. We have Durgo, which evolves into Pakliff. It is the Dingo Pokemon. It is ground type. Samrush, Samvale, Samforce as its abilities. Based on Dingo, natural rival to the Pupzin line. And Pupzin is going to evolve into Doxic. It is the healer pokemon it is uh, a poison type it gets merciless ball fetch moxie and it's based on the blue healer and the reason i made a poison type is just the joke that the rest of the world has that everything in australia is venomous including the things that shouldn't be venomous so i thought it'd be funny to like let's make a dog venomous that'd be hilarious uh, but yeah and it's a natural rival to the durgo line uh we do also have a picture of bluey because a fun fact for you i was gonna make this the australian shepherd but i was sharing this with my wife as i do and she was like what you gotta have bluey representation and i was like huh and she's like do a blue healer not an australian shepherd and honestly that blue kind of color i think works better with the poison typing and also it's always a great time to shout out Bluey. If you have kids, make them watch Bluey. It's amazing. Okay, so we have Core Free Farms. By the way, I don't have kids. I feel like I should clarify that. Yeah, and I watch Bluey. I do have a little brother. He's four. Uh, 
based on the farmlands of Lockyer Valley, Queensland, Australia. This is the beautiful Corfri Farms. They double as a place for injured Pokemon to be nursed back to health. This is also where Professor Baobab grew up, and his parents will still run the place. Some wild Pokemon you can find, Riolu, Mareep, and Ertini. What's Ertini? Let's find out. Ertini, which evolves into Urtuga Pokemon, or Urturga, excuse me, is the warrior Pokemon. It's a fighting type, and it's based on the Irwin's turtle. Fun fact, Steve Irwin discovered a turtle, and his very recently, like within the last year, I think even within the last six months, his son, uh, Robert Irwin, actually managed to uh, successfully breed the Irwin's turtle in captivity. So that's really cool, and I thought that we should acknowledge that because the Irwin's rock. We have Corfrey City. Corfrey coming from Coral Reef. It's based on Brisbane in Australia and Queensland specifically. Uh, it's beautiful. It's bustling. Super popular. And it's how you're going to get to the Great Consora Reef. But more on that later. Uh, places of interest, the Professor's Lab and the Corfrey City Gym. Again, more on that later because it is not time to take on that gym. And you don't have surfer dive. You can't take on the Great Consora Reef right now. What's wrong with you? Professor Baobab's laboratory can be accessed here. It's based on the Crocodile Hunter Lodge and Australian Zoo, which is in Birwa, Queensland, Australia. It is the laboratory for Professor Baobab, of course, uh, and the Crocodile Hunter Lodge and the Australian Zoo both. Well, the Australian Zoo was founded by Steve Irwin. Crocodile Hunter Lodge was uh, after his death uh, and founded by his family and is in honor of him. The Crocodile Hunter and Crocodile Hunter Lodge is Steve. We have Route 2, Corfrey Coast, which is based on Hervey Bay in Queensland. Beautiful, beloved, and you can find a lot of Pokemon here, including one new one named Spurin. This is the most horrifying thing on the planet. Y'all aren't ready for this. So, Spurin is the Spur Pokemon. It is a normal poison type with toxic debris, poison point, and clear body. It is based on the, I'm going to do my best here, Urukanji Jellyfish. And also tops, because, you know, it's kind of similar to that. You see how tiny it is. That is a man holding it up. So it's about, yippee, really tiny. I have small hands. Um, yeah, very tiny jellyfish. Very, very tiny jellyfish. Uh, here's what's freaky about them. So a lot of the times, jellyfish go with the current. And so, you know, if you hit one, you get stung, right? Yeah, that sucks. Well, this one, if you get stung by it, it uh, kills you. You die. You, you don't survive that. Uh, and if that isn't enough for you, there are some studies from what I found. There are some studies that theorize that this thing, as you can see, it's a tiny guy, so there's not a ton known about them, but they think they chase people. They think that these things, while other jellyfish go with the current, they think that this thing sees you in the water swimming and goes, oh yeah, I'm going to freaking kill that guy and goes after you. Now, if that wasn't enough for you, just you wait. They can shoot spurs. They can, oh, well, I'm a safe distance from that Urukanji jellyfish, so I'm all good. No, it just shot you with a spur, because it can do that, because Australia is payback for the sins of man. All right, so Corfrey Springs. We uh, have this. This is based on Heathlands Regional Park in Queensland. Uh, they are more than just a beautiful place to relax. They are also the most popular spot for wild Toro tea. What's a Toro tea? It's our convergent species. And there's not a picture, but we have Sea Tauros, which is the sea cow Pokemon. It is a water type with thick fat, cud chew, and sheer force. It's based on a sea cow, which is basically a manatee. I, in fact, I've yet to learn the difference between the two. Uh, it's convergent species to Tauros. So yeah, check that out, the manatee, if you don't know what that looks like. They're very, very cool, very sweet, very intelligent creatures. I love them so much. Route 3 is Coral Road, based on Mount Barney National Park. It's uh, going to be a big trek to Coral Mountain, but feel free to stop, take breaks. There's plenty of wildlife to watch. Uh, you get access to Coral Mountain, and also you it connects to Foothill City. You're going to see some wild Pokemon, including Imaga and Deerling, but also these new ones. We have Gegro, which evolves into Gekrath, which is the Gecko Pokemon. It's a grass type, and Gekrath will become grass rock it's based on the thick-tailed gecko you see that boy he got a thick tail he can smack you with it and it'll be a rock and you'll that'll hurt uh, dev evil is the devil pokemon it's the tasmanian devil it's dark type and it gets vicious which would be like a supreme overlord ability which is uh, king gamut's ability but yeah based on the tasmanian devil look how sharp their fangs are i would not want to get bit by that 
Coral Mountain is based on Mount Barney in Queensland, Australia. Popular hiking spot. No new Pokemon here, but yeah, there's there's rumors of two legendary creatures. Spoiler alert, it's your box legends having been born at the summit of this mountain. Then you get to Foothill City. It's based on Lismore and New South Wales. So we are now in New South Wales, guys. We've made it through a lot of this region. Uh, it's the charming city. It's a place to experience life in the western Kinsora Mountains and learn about the mythology of the Kinsora region. Some places of interest here are the Foothill Museum and the Foothill Gym, and it connects to Route 3. So you're finally going to take on your first gym. This is exciting. So the Foothill Museum is based on the Lismore Historical Society Museum. This is a place that you can see art pieces passed down from generations of Kinsora people and... Also, you can learn a little bit about the legends that, you know, are supposed to take place in Kinsora. That's Skyus and Aquas. The Foothill Gem. It's a ground-type gem. The gem leader is Leo, who also happens to be the museum curator. He gives the tectonic badge. He's going to use ground-type Pokemon like Geodude, Nummel, and Packliff, which, if you don't remember, is the, uh, um, the, the evolution to uh, the Dingo Pokemon. Route 4 is the Conchell Coast. This is based on the New South Wales coast in Australia. Gorgeous coast, home to a wide variety of uh, wildlife, and its beautiful waters cannot be matched. Gets access to the SS Crocrush. <clears throat> you don't have surf, though. You can't go there yet. And some wild Pokemon found here include some old ones like Sandy Gas and Krabby, and also some new ones like Crocrush and Quishore. All right, so now that we've got our first gem badge, let's learn about these new Pokemon. So first off... One of those new Pokemon, or old Pokemon, was actually Gumi, and it'll evolve into Kinsoran Sligu and Kinsoran Gudra. It is called the Shell Weapon Pokemon. It's based on the Cone Snail, which is this little guy. Fun fact about this little guy, he can shut down your entire nervous system. Um, it's going to be Dragon Poison, like I said. I imagine that this would be more similar to Hisuian Sligu and Hisuian Gudra than it would be Colosian Sligu and Colosian Gudra. Uh, I guess the idea there is like that you know, Hisuian Gudra evolved to keep its shell here in Kinsora, but did not over in the Kalos region and other regions. Uh, yeah, Poison Point, Poison Touch, this thing's very venomous. It's scary. Let's get away from it. That is okay. We have... That was a spoiler. That was some good art, but we'll get to it in a minute. We have Mudrabi and Mudrill, which is the drilling Pokemon, a ground electric type based on the Mud Crab and also inspired by the electric drill, which was actually an Australian invention. Who knew? Uh, Koishore is the dollar Pokemon. It's very steel, got good as gold, which is Golden Go's ability, and it's based on a sand dollar. Crocrush, which will evolve into Drowdile and then Draquadile. This is the saltwater crocodile Pokemon. It's water dragon. This thing is so cool. Again, art by SEH, art gold. Check them out. Why have you not checked them out yet? Based on the Australian saltwater crocodile, specifically the largest croc ever recorded. The largest crocodile ever recorded was a saltwater crocodile in Australia. It was uh, killed by a fisherman uh, with, with a shotgun. And if I am not mistaken, it was 26 feet long. I, I'll repeat that in case you didn't hear it. 26 feet long. It's a pseudo-legendary, too, so that's cool. Then we have Conchell City. Conchell is coming from Conch Shell. I'm so silly. Uh, based on Sydney in New South Wales, it's super bustling, big city. Here you're going to find the Conchell Aquarium, the Conchell Gym, the Consora Region Pokemon League, and I'll connect to the Conchell Bridge. Let's learn about those places. So first we have the Conchell Aquarium. It's going to be based on the Sea Life Sydney Aquarium. Uh, here you can find a wide variety of Pokemon that call the ocean their home with exhibits on the rivers of Kinsora, the uh, the coast that says cast, and that's a typo, and I apologize, the Great Kinsora Reef, and the SS Crocrush. So, you know, all the different water areas of the region. I love aquariums that do that. So we have the Conchell Gym. It's a ghost-type gym. The gym leader Charlotte, an orchestra conductor, she's going to give the dreary badge, and she's going to use a ghastly, a frillish, and a ha half, which again is the uh, second stage of the Laughing Kookaburra line. And obviously, this is a reference to the fact that the Sydney Opera House, you know, it's an opera house, but not here. It's not. It's the Pokemon League here. Uh, the goal of all trainers, of course, is to get here. You'll take on the Elite Four, and you'll go ahead and meet 
the Elite Four. Let's learn about them. So we have Mark. He's a normal type. He's a businessman from Alola. Simple guy. He moved here to make more money. That's it. Devron, he's a fighting titan. He's a movie star known for his role in action films. He may or may not be based on Hugh Jackman. Tori, an electric type. She is a doctor at the Conshell Hospital. Uh, Julius is a poison type Elite Four member. He's a factory owner and multimillionaire hailing from Wark City, which we'll learn about later. Uh, he is actually also the CEO of Works Works, which again, we'll learn about all that later. Important place in the region. The Conshell Bridge, which is based on the Sydney Harbor Bridge. Just going to connect you to the next route. Nothing too crazy about that, but you got to include it because it's, it's a staple. So we have Route 5, Jungle Way. It's based on the Mungo, the Mungo Rainforest Walk in New South Wales. Uh, before getting deep into Florella Jungle, you're going to go through the Jungle Way, and it's a much tamer rainforest experience. You've got some wild Pokemon that you know, like Azurl and the Elemental Monkeys, but also it looks like there's some new ones. We have Hoobit, which evolves into Oofral. It's based on a... Uh, Tiny frog mouth, or tawny frog mouth, excuse me. It's ground flying. I love these little guys. Look at that mouth. It looks like something out of Star Wars. I love that thing. And then you have Gachik, which evolves into uh, Prelea, which is the princess Pokemon. And yes, it does have Leia in its name because uh, this thing reminded me of Star Wars. And so then I thought of Princess Leia when I made this the princess Pokemon. It's based on a gala bird. Very pretty bird. Uh, so fairy flying, ground flying. A lot of I love birds. Florella. Florella jungle is coming from Flora. It's based on the Minamura rainforest, a dangerous yet stunning rainforest. The Florella jungle is a difficult maze to traverse, but make sure to enjoy the views along your way because it's very pretty. And we're going to see some new Pokemon here and learn about a new evolution. Uh, so first, the new Pokemon. We have Platypup, which is going to evolve into Platypoise or Platypow. Males will evolve into Platypoise and females will evolve into Platypow. Uh, the females will be pure water, and the males will be water poison because platypus have, or platypi, excuse me, platypeople, if you will, have little spurs on them that are uh, venomous, but only the males have that. So the female's going to be pure water and get some cool abilities to make up for that, like drizzle, whereas the male is going to be able to take advantage of that poison typing. We have Grigaru, which evolves into Grigaru, and it is the tree kangaroo pokemon it's grass ghost based on tree kangaroo look at this thing that is genuinely i saw that and i stared at it for 15 minutes because i thought it might be my new favorite animal and I i'm still debating that a new regional form consoran komala which evolves into hostala it is the grumpy pokemon it is a dark type now Vital Spirit, Sheer Force, and Vicious. It's based on the Drop Bear. Now, the Drop Bear is not a real thing. Fun fact. But it's kind of like an Australian snipe, if you will. Like, it's it's like a little, like, wives' tale in Australia. Uh, if you Google pictures of the Drop Bear, a lot of the real-life ones are actually just a wet koala. Um, but, yeah, it, I love... The idea of the drop bear, so we're, we're making Kamala dark type, and the idea is it's awake now, gets vital spirit to like hammer in that, you know, before it could only be put to sleep, now it can not be put to sleep. It is wide awake and ready to kill. A new evolution, we have Drampage, which is the Berserk Pokemon. It is normal dragon, it's the evolved form of Drampa, and it's playing off of Bearded Dragon, because Drampa is literally a bearded dragon, even though it doesn't look like the animal bearded dragon, so yeah. Then we have Rue Valley Route 6. It is uh, home to a wide variety of Pokemon and attracts researchers from all over as it serves as a gathering point for cer certain species that they're starting to think may be related. Uh, so you're going to find Kangaskhan here, but also some more Pokemon that are based on kangaroos. We have Aquaro, which evolves into Aquaroo. It's the late kangaroo Pokemon, Water Dark. Based on Eastern Grey Kangaroo, fun fact about kangaroos, sometimes they'll wait in water and they're wanting you to get near them so they can drown you. So that has happened to people. So that's that's why we're making a water kangaroo that is also dark type because evil. Fyro evolves into Fyru and it is the a firefighting Pokemon. It's the desert kangaroo. It's going to be based on a red kangaroo. Uh, these things just, you know, they, they look like a firefighting type, right? Then we have Territory 2 of the Great Consora Wild, so you will have the option to go back in here if you want. Uh, this is going to be the hottest part in the Great Consora Wilds. The sun is just baking on you here. 
a lot of fire types you can find here like litleo but you can also find heliotau specifically a new form of heliotau that is consorin and of course will evolve into a consorin heliolisk it's the solar panel pokemon and it's fire dragon now it's based on the frill lizard which heliolisk was too but this has that more red color so i wanted to bring that out and make it a fire dragon type and it is like one with the sun now even gets drowsing ability which would make up for the fact that heliolisk has no evolution rue lake lodges so this is based on lake george also called the disappearing lake which is really cool because like i don't know if it's a tides thing or something i forget but basically this lake will be here sometimes and sometimes it won't be and i think that's really neat here you're also going to find the Consor Fossil Institute because there's going to be a group of people that are come here to study and some of them are going to be uh, paleontologists and they'll be willing to revive your fossils when you get one, which won't be until a bit. We have the Consor and Fossil Institute, place I just talked about. It's based on the National Dinosaur Museum, which is actually located in Canberra. Uh, and yeah, they're dedicated to studying fossils. What do you need to know? Rue Lake Walk. So again, this is going to be based on that disappearing lake, Lake George. And uh, yeah, there's going to be, you know, when it's the water's high, it's going to be a wetland. When the water's low, it's going to be kind of this creepy foresty area. Uh, and that's based on the fact that there is rumors of ghost hitchhikers at Lake George. So that's fun. And the hitchhiking ghost Pokemon, Hauntike, it's going to evolve into attachant and it is a ghost type gets wandering spirit as an ability which is currently renurigus's exclusive ability like only renurigus has it again based on the ghost hitchhiker myths of lake george couldn't find a picture of those so there's the ghost hitchhikers from the haunted mansion and disney world fun fact when this video uploads i'll be in disney world so that's cool uh then we have alster city this is based on canberra which is the capital territory uh or which is the capital in the australian capital territory uh, this is where the future of the region is decided. You're going to have a gym here, an airport, which will come in handy later. And also, we're going to have the Capitol House. Let's learn about the Capitol House. So, obviously, it's based on the Parliament House. Here, there's going to be a consortium council. And this council is basically, you know, the people that decide what goes on in the region. You can call for a meeting there. Uh, while you're there, I imagine you'll run into... Uh, professor baobab who will be trying to push for some more conservation in you know the region of consora then we have the alster city airport this is going to be important to getting to uh, wilds village or wild city uh, later on but that ain't until the post game alster city gym a flying type gym guy's going to use pidgeotto a kilowattrel and an oofral as his ace which again is the tawny frog mouth pokemon uh, he's going to get the altitude badge and he's a pilot then we have Route 8, Consor Hills Road. This is based on the bright area in uh, Victoria, Australia. And I don't mean like this area is bright. I mean like the area is called bright. That's the name of it. Uh, spectacular high altitude road. Uh, you're going to find a lot of flying type Pokemon here, including a new Pokemon called Batini, which is going to evolve into Batak. And it is a ghost dark type based on a gray-headed flying fox. Those things are so cool. Then we have Consorn Emolga, which is going to evolve into Emigrate, which is the Sugar Glider Pokemon. Electric Fairy now instead of Electric Flying, but gets that Levitate, so it will only be weak to Poison-type moves, which is pretty cool. It's based on Sugar Glider. Emolga is such an underrated Pokemon. It's my favorite Pico clone, I think. Definitely is. Definitely. Steepland City, based on Melbourne and Victoria, Australia. It is a bustling city, and you can also get to Jumrest Island here, but there's also a gym, too. Steep Plan Harbor, this is obviously where you'll go to get to uh, Jung Grove Town. Steep Plan City Gym, we have the grass type gym leader, Ryla. She's an adventurer, loves to go out and just explore and live life to the fullest. Cool girl. Uh, she's going to use a Gegro, an Ostretch, and a Grigaru. Then we have Jung Grove Town, which is going to be uh, from Jungle and Grove. It's based on Devonport and Tasmania. So you're going to go to the harbor, take a boat over here to jun rest island and specifically the town of jung grove and yeah you can do fishing tournaments here at the jung grove harbor i imagine that there will be a fishing competition it'd be like the bug catching contest over in the johto regions we've all played that it's great uh, but this one would be fishing jun rest island wild so jun rest is coming from jungle and on rest again 
Uh, these are going to be based on just the wilds of Tasmania. Beautiful place. And yeah, I'll have several different environments for you to trek through. Uh, the rocky coastline, caves, all kinds of stuff. You're going to find a lot of wild Pokemon here, including a new Pokemon called Eucaleaf, which evolves into Eucabo. It's the Eucalyptus Pokemon. It's based on a rainbow eucalyptus tree. As you can see, these, like, their bark when they peel, they look like a rainbow, and that's really cool. Fuzzyl will be the new evolution to Dugong. It is the fur seal Pokemon. It is based on the Australian fur seal. And yeah, it's water ice. It's really cool. Dugong needs it. It deserves it. So yeah, there's that. Then we have Steepland Grove. These are based on the, you're going to go back to Steepland City and continue in the mainland Kinsora. And this is based on the Royal Botanic Gardens in Victoria, uh, or, or the Ro Royal Botanic Gardens Victoria, which are also called the Melbourne Gardens in Melbourne. It is a great place to escape from the city. You're going to find some wild Pokemon, including Goldeem, which evolves into Sea King, as you know. But what you didn't know is Sea King evolves again. Sea Pyre, the Dragon Koi Pokemon. It is a water dragon type with Swift Swim, Water Veil, Lightning Rod, and it's the evolved form of Sea King based on the myths connecting dragons to Koi Fish. Basically, if a Koi Fish drops over a waterfall, it becomes a dragon. And Sea King happens to learn waterfall naturally. It is featured in the Odala region as well. That's right, you heard me, SEHR Gold. He's currently doing his own Pokemon region, a fake mom region, based off of his area in the US. And it is called the Odala region. And he also has Sea Pyre. He actually, fun fact, made Sea Pyre for his region. And then we happened to be talking, and I mentioned that, you know, I gave Seeking an evolution because that's something I'm passionate about, Seeking one day getting an evolution. And he was like, oh, well, I have a design for that. You want to use it in your region? And I was like, yeah. And so I'm plugging his region too. Seriously, go check it out. He's got such cool designs, including a water tower. And you might be like, how's a water tower a good Pokemon? Go check it out and see because it is. Based on Hawker, South Australia, we have Gorthro Town. Gorthro may not seem like much, but it's a geologist's dream because of its close proximity to uh, Gorthro Pass and Gorthro Mines. That's okay. We have Gorthro Pass, which are based on the Flinders Ranges in South Australia. It's a rocky pass. You're going to find Rog and Rolla, Dwebble, Geodude, Onyx, and you can even find the Tooth Fossil and the Spike Fossil, which if you take back to uh, the little... Consoran Fossil Institute, you will be able to revive those into our fossils, which are Minic and Dibbit. Minic evolves into Minmite. It's the spiky back Pokemon. It's based on a Minmi dinosaur. I may be pronouncing that wrong. I'm not a paleontologist. Uh, rock poison. Crazy typing. Uh, I don't think it's... No, it has been done before. Glamour. And I think there might have been something before that. Nihil ago. Uh, Dibbit evolves into Dipruff. It is the first parent Pokemon because... It's based on Diprotodon, which is a prehistoric marsupial. So that's cool. It's rock steel, and it gets parental bond. Wow. Work City is based on Alice Springs in the Northern Territory of Australia, said to have once been a beautiful city with nature. The current state is that's just an industrial city. And here you'll actually be able to find wild Pokemon like Trubbish, Grimer, and also regional forms of Cramorant and Aracuda. Aracuda, excuse me. We have Consoran Cramorant, which is the Gulp Pokemon. It's Poison Flying. It gets Gulp Missile, which now will change to boost the power of Surf and Dive to make up for the fact that this Cramorant is not a uh, water type. And it's based on the Australian White Ibis, also called the Bin Chicken in Australia. That's what they call them because, as you can see, they uh, jump onto trash cans and like will eat out of the trash can. Consoran Aracuda and Berscuta. It's based on a fish skeleton, Ghost Poison. Uh, you know, it's like the classic cartoon trope. Every time there's garbage, there's always a fish skeleton laying there. So I thought, let's do that too. But yeah, I, I love that idea. And it would be launching these Aracuda instead of the other Aracuda, right? WorksWorks Works is an industry supplying Consora with products, electricity, energy. It's basically just how everything runs in the Consora region. Its CEO, of course, is Julius of the Elite Four. He is the Poison Type Elite Four member. And yeah, it's, it's a big city. causes a lot of pollution, but uh, that's not an issue for now. We have the Work City Gym. Steel Type Gym. The gym leader is Gus, who is a foreman at Works Works. He gives the gear badge. His Pokemon are going to be Buffaleek, which, of course, is the middle stage of our water starter. Koishore, the which is the Sand Dollar Pokemon. And Minmite, which is the uh, final evolution of the um, 
Oh, that, that's a mistake, because formerly that was, fun fact, that was uh, Rock Poison. They, they had switched typings. So now it's Diproff. He uses Diproff, because that's the Rock Steel one. Then we have Territory 3. Sorry, I'm not perfect. <laughs> um, this is the rockiest of territory. It's, it's a great place to go amongst hikers. It's going to connect to Oea Town and uh, Parati City. We're going to learn about those one at a time. We'll get there. Oea Town, you already learned about. Parati City will be where we go next. But, yeah, you're going to find a lot of Pokemon here, including some new ones and also a new regional form. That's okay. So we have our regional form, Consorn Barboach, which is going to evolve into Consorn Whiskash, which is going to evolve into Whiskeel, which is the eelfish Pokemon, because there is an eel catfish and freshwater eels, which you can see pictures of them both here. These will be ground psychic, come from the idea that, like, those whiskers, you know, wisdom, that kind of invokes those vibes. So, yeah. The Great Consora Reef. That's right. Before we make our way to Parati City, we are actually going to, because now you can surf and dive, we're going to make our way back to the other places. So the Great Consora Reef is based on the Great Barrier Reef. Dive would come back, and you'll be able to just free dive in this expansive wild area-like area in the region. Wow, this will be cool. So it gets access to the Trench. The Trench, we'll learn about in a bit, but there's a lot of wild Pokemon that you know here, like Corsola and Clampearl, but also plenty of new ones and new forms. So some new Pokemon, we have Gilliege, and that evolves into Finite, which is the Swordfish Pokemon, Water Steel, based on Swordfish, obviously. Tunish, which is based on a Yellowfin Tuna, Water Electric, and gets Motor Drive and Surge Surfer. Pulshroom, which evolves into Pulshrike. This will be pure bug and will be based on the Peacock Mantis Shrimp. A fun fact about the Peacock Mantis Shrimp, they can see more colors than we can. Like, significantly more. Which is hard to fathom. It's like, you know, well, what colors? Well, I can't tell you because I can't see them. Which is just... That does something to my brain. Uh, then we have Laughish, the Clownfish Pokemon. It is a water type and it would get Captain. It would be paired with this Pokemon called Cinnamony which is the Anemone Pokemon, and basically it is going to be like a Dondozo Tatsugiri situation where uh, the Clownfish will go inside the Anemone and cost like the Clownfish from being able to, uh, you know, it, 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 the Clownfish would not be able to use attacks like Tatsugiri and Dondozo now. Then we have Serpoise, which is the Serpent Pokemon. It is a Poison Dark type, gets Shed Skin, Poison Fang, which basically makes Biting Moves get a boost and a 20% chance to badly poison. Uh, poison Fang is actually a Pokemon move, though, so we're going to call this uh, Venom Fangs. That's okay. We have new regional forms in Consorn Starmie, the Thorn Pokemon. This is based on a Crown of Thorns Sea Star, Water Poison. We have Consorn Mantike and Mantime, which are based on the Spotted Eagle Ray, which are these like really spotted psychedelic looking rays, and it will be psychic flying now. Then we have Corsalverse. That's right. Corsola evolves. The Jotonian Corsola evolves. You know, we have a Corsola evolution with uh, Galarian Corsola, but now Jotonian Corsola is getting some love with Corsalverse, which would just be a giant coral reef based on, of course, the Great Barrier Reef. And then the trench is this just horrifying trench in the ocean. Uh, there's a lot of those. And you're not recommended to go there because while you can't see it, you can feel this presence of something down the trench. This is where later you'll go and Aquas is living if you're playing Pokemon Seas. The SS Crocrush. So this is based on the floating forest in New South Wales. We mentioned this earlier. You can now go back there and actually access it with Surf. So stories vary on why this ship wound up abandoned, but either way, nature's now claimed it. And so you can see the floating, floating, the floating forest is exactly that. Uh, it's just a boat that was abandoned, and nature went, nope, we're going to make this a forest. You can find fins in here, seal, quillfish, and also Turtopolis, which is the city Pokemon. It's based on a green sea turtle and the floating forest. It's going to be a water grass type with a new ability called Military Action. So basically, when this Pokemon gets below 50% HP, attacks will now do 10% more, and getting hit by a physical move will actually cause the user of the move to lose 1 10th HP, so a little bit like a built-in Rocky Helmet. This, of course, only activates when it gets below 50%. The idea here is like when they hit it, the Pokemon that are living 
on this Tortopolis's Tortopolis's back will come out to like attack the uh, opponent. Then we have Parade City. It's based on Ulara uh, in the Northern Territory. It's a resort city, so now we're back on our adventure. Uh, you can go to the Great Consoran Wilds here, of course, and it'll connect to Route 10. Uh, this new territory of the Great Consoran Wilds is uh, going to be Territory 4. It's special because, well, you know, there's a lot of farmers here. You wouldn't think that they can grow stuff, but they've they've clearly made it work. Some new wild Pokemon. We have Vamara U, which is this freaky little guy. He is the vampire Pokemon. He's Ghost Fairy. It's based on the Yaramayahu, I think is how you would pronounce that. Uh, it would get a move called Vampire, where biting moves have a slight boost, so not quite as strong as strong job, but a boost. And will also heal a bit of HP, kind of like Giga Drain, Absorb, those kinds of moves. Then we have Womble and Womrock, which is the Wombat Pokemon. It's Rock Normal, and it's based on a Wombat. We have Rural City, coming from Rural. Uh, it's based on Kununura, Western Australia. And yeah, a beautiful little farm and city connects to Route 11, but first we're going to go to Route 10, because Route 11 and 10 will be connecting to the same place. Route 10 is Colcombe Pass. It is uh, based on the Sterling Range in Western Australia. Here you're going to find Burby, which is based on a Bilby. It is, evolves into Bilberries, and it's the chilling Pokemon, Ice Psychic. Route 11 is also based on the Sterling Range. Again, they're going to connect to the same place. They're both connecting to Colcombe Mountain. And here you're going to find Frosling, which is going to evolve into Lixing, the Skink Pokemon. It is Ice Dragon. It's based on a Blue Tongue Skink. Then we have Coco Mountain, which is based on Bluff Knoll over in Western Australia. Second highest peak in all of Kinsora. Uh, total opposite of the Hot Wilds, offering a cooler place to train, hike, or just enjoy Kinsora. You're going to be able to go to Colcombe City here. It's based on Cranbrook and Western Australia. It's far away from most of the Consoran population and sitting underneath a cold mountain. It's easy for one to forget that this place is part of the region because, you know, it's just so different. Here, you're going to be able to go against the Colcombe City Gym. The gym leader is Nicole. She's a skier and she'll give the Snowfall Badge. Uh, she's going to use a Burberry's Elixing, and her ace is going to be Fuzzy Old, which again is that evolved form of Dugong we talked about earlier. We have the Southern Consora Coast, Route 12, so you're going to now kind of be making your way back, or you can make your way back to Gorthrow Town. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Look at that. That's just what the South Australian coast looks like. You got to include this. Then we have Sea Pyre Bay, which is going to be based on Adelaide in South Australia. Uh, then we have Route 13, Gorthrow Mines. Here you're going to be able to get past fossils. So now here you can find your Helix fossils, Old Ambers, those kind of stuff to get past fossils like Aerodactyl, Ammonite, Kabuto, Cradley, etc., etc., or I guess Lilip, whatever. So then going back to the Consoran Wilds, we have another territory, Territory 5. It may be the harshest, not because of the terrain or the weather, but because of the suit constantly raining down from Mount Ash. Here it's going to connect to Mount Ash, but we're going to learn about that in a little bit. Here's a new Pokemon. We have Thornazar, which is the Thorn Lizard Pokemon based on a Thorny Devil, which is that handsome gentleman right there. Steel Dragon and Thornisect, which is the Thorn Bug Pokemon. It's mimicking the Thorny Devil. Isn't that cute? And it's based on a prickly stick insect. It's not really doing that in real life, but it's Bug Dragon, and the idea would be that it is in the Pokemon world. Mount Ash is based on the fact that in the Jurassic era, Australia was mainly just a network of now dormant volcanoes. So we're making one not dormant and we're putting it here. And when the time comes, you will climb to the peak of it to catch Skyus if you're playing Pokemon Skies, because that's where he is at the summit. Then we have a new evolution. We have Turtonade. So Turtonator is going to evolve just like its counterpart, Drampa. This is the Blast Turtle Pokemon. Stays Fire Dragon, evolves from Turtonator. Uh, just felt that Turtonair deserved something if Drampa did, and also, between you and me, we were having a lack of fire types in this game, so needed to add some. Then, Ash City is based on Palmerston in Northern Territory of Australia. Uh, tropical vibes make it easy to forget you're in the wilds, under a volcano, that's raining down ash on you. Here you can take on the Ash City Gym, which is our seventh gym, a fire type gym, with Mark being the gym leader, who's a volcanologist, which is someone that studies volcano, if you couldn't guess that. Gives the Eruption Badge, and he's using Magcargo, Fire Roost, Salazzle, and his ace is Turtonade. 
So this is where, before we get to our eighth gem, we have to do the plot of the game. So basically what's going to happen is Julius, the Elite Four member, who's also the CEO of uh, WorksWorks, is basically wanting to expand WorksWorks. Professor Baobab obviously doesn't like this because you see what WorksWorks did to Work City. It polluted it and even changed the form of some Pokemon, you know, Cramorant and Aracuda, arguably not for the better. So Professor Baobab is like, we got to do this. Like, we can't let him do this. And uh, you will go to stop him at WorksWorks. You'll succeed, but it's too late. There has now been a malfunction at one of the new plants he set up, which has caused a wildfire in the uh, Consoran Wild. So now you're going to have to go get the legendary Pokemon Skyus, if you're playing Pokemon Skies, to bring winds to just extinguish the fires, or Aquas to bring rain to extinguish the fires. Uh, you know, so you'll either go up Mount Ash or into the trench of the Great Consoran Reef. So now. Elite Four Julius, you're going to have to take him on. He's going to use Surpoise, Consoran Barascuda, Consoran Gudra, Speckled, and Dogzik will be his ace. Now, you know, the idea here is you're battling an Elite Four member and you're not even ready to take on the Elite Four. You haven't gotten all eight badges, so it's going to be a tough match. But after you've done this and solved all of it, you get to take on the Core Free City Gym, which of course was the first gym we saw that we couldn't utilize yet. Uh, here we're going to have a war type gym leader. She's a diver and aquarium curator named Julia, and she's going to use an Aquaru, Platypoise, Platypow, or Sea Pyre. So her ace will be the evolution of Sea King. Now you're ready to take on the Pokemon League. Now after the events of the Great Consorum Wild, obviously Julius has been removed as an Elite Four member. So it's the Elite Three? No, because actually your good friend Connor the first gym leader you met who actually lost his gym and wanted to rejoin the ranks of the Pokemon League and recreate his gym actually was asked to join the Elite Four. So now there's a Rock-type Elite Four member, and it's Connor, and that's amazing. Connor's such a cool guy. Everyone, if you made it this far, congratulate Connor. So, Elite Four Mark, you know, that's our businessman guy. Yeah, he is based off Larry. I love that archetype, and I want another one. Maybe he's his brother. I don't know. So his Pokemon will be Quoquash, Spurin, Opossum, Spitrap, and also, or Spytrap, excuse me, and Drampage. So his ace is going to be the Dramp Evolution. Devrin, he's a star in action films. He may or may not be based on Hugh Jackman. Don't look at the picture. And his Pokemon are going to be all fighting types. Castle War, uh, which is our Cassowary Pokemon, our Emu Cassowary Pokemon. That's a fighting type. Uh, we have Brawlbug, Crabominable, Passimian, and Arturga. And we have Tori, who is a doctor. She's an electric type Elite Four member. Kikachu, Tunish, Mudrill, Ampharos, and he migrate as her ace. And lastly, we have Connor, the rock type gym leader who helped us get here. Now a rock type Elite Four member. He is going to use the fossils with Mean Might will actually be his ace since Dipruff is the ace of the uh, steel type gym leader. And yeah, he is now headmaster of the Tor City Trainer School. He's officially opened the gym as a trainer school with his salary that he gets as an elite four member will we disclose the salary of elite four members in this game maybe i don't know and lastly champion bail bob the man the myth the legend steve Irwin himself so he's going to use an aqualu a pyrocene and an ostride so all three final evolutions of the starters of the consor region he's also going to use a tortopolis which is that green sea turtle pokemon Batak, which is the evolution of the Flying Fox Pokemon, and Draquadile, the pseudo-legendary, the Saltwater Crocodile Pokemon. Yeah, this uh, he's going to be tough. Okay, so now you've beaten the league. You've beaten the game, right? Well, there's reports of an unknown Pokemon attacking travelers in the westernmost part of the Consora region, which has prompted the Consoran Council to ask you, you know, the newest champion, to investigate. So you make your way to Ouster City, you hop on a plane at the Ouster City Airport to get to Wild City, which is based on Perth and Western Australia. It was once a small village, but uh, people loved going to the desert beach, which you'll learn about in a bit. So they actually were able to, with the money they were getting from tourism, grow this into a giant bustling city. It connects to another territory of the Great Consorum Wilds. There, of course, is the Wild City Airport. That's how you get back. And yeah, this territory, it's Territory 6, you can fly, find a lot of high-level Pokemon here, like Flygon, Crustle, Golurk, 
etc. Desert Beach. So this is going to be based on Esperance in Australia. Uh, it's a beautiful desert beach, aptly named because, well, it's a desert, but it's also right next to the ocean. So you're going to find the mysterious Pokemon that's been terrorizing travelers here. And this is where it gets very strange. The Pokemon is Tyrant, but seemingly an ancient form of Tyrant. It's a dragon dark type, and it's also slightly inspired by the Burangor, which is this, basically there's rumors of a dinosaur living in the outback. And given that Australia has a jellyfish that chases you and shoots you with spurs, I'm inclined to believe that there is indeed a T-Rex in the outback. Uh, the capture of this Pokemon is astounding. It seems that this is what Tyrant would look like back in its day without the altering of its appearance, typing, and ability that the fossil restoration co process calls causes excuse me while this tyrant seemingly cannot evolve the held item eviolite will work on it so maybe there's a chance that it will evolve later on either way why is this ancient form of tyrant alive today and of all places why is it here in Kinsura? rest assured professor baobab will be looking into this and that's where we get to the dlc so that is it for the main game you have the option to purchase a dlc later it's called the secrets of the pokemon world the DLC will include Part 1, The Banquet Isles, and Part 2, The Hidden World. So, Part 1 is The Banquet Isles, which are based on Fiji. Professor Baobab will ask you to go see Professor Coco in The Banquet Isles, who's been researching extinct Pokemon species. So, they're hoping that basically his research could lead to answers on the ancient form of Tyrant you found. While here, it is much smaller, but you can take on The Banquet Isles League, which I imagine will be very similar to like island trials or even like the orange islands from the anime you will also be able to get access to z moves and alolan forms will be found here because fiji is a polynesian isle like hawaii is uh so we have 10 new pokemon here five new lines one new convergent line uh and two new cross gen evolutions no regional form evolutions and no regional forms this time around but there will be one other new form like a blood moon form like an ancient form that we'll talk about in a bit there's the type breakdown if you want to look at that so the first island is table island based on vd levu in fiji which is the biggest island in fiji uh okal city is based on suva <clears throat> the okal city is the largest city in the banquet isles with huge market a harbor to boat to other islands the banquet league and a laboratory so uh, let's talk about those the okal harbor this is how you're going to get to the other islands as well as you could take a boat back to kinsora if you wanted to uh, the Oakle Market, here you're going to be able to get ability patches, TMs, ball caps. It'll be like the auctions from uh, Scarlet and Violet, because I think that's a great feature. And also, you'll be able to get berries and treats to increase your Pokemon's friendship. <clears throat> so the Banquet Isles Pokemon League, you're going to learn about a little bit. Not as large as the other regions. It's going to be four gym trials, and once you take on all of those, you will have to battle all four of the gym leaders. So the four gym leaders are basically being treated like Elite Four members. Uh, then we have the Oko Laboratory. It's based on the Fuji Museum and Suva. Professor Coco's here. He's studying extinct Pokemon. And yeah, he's going to give you a Z Ring and a Normalium Z, so you can now use Z moves. So then we have Oko Forest. It's based on the Kolo I Suva Forest Park. That pronunciation might be horrible. Sorry. Uh, it is one of the most serene places in the world. Be sure to stop, sit down, just listen to the forest speak. You can find some Pokemon like Burmy, Weedle, and Caterpie here, and it's going to connect to Rudewood Valley. Rudewood Valley is based on Koryanitum National Park in VD Levu. It is a beautiful valley, completed by the equally beautiful Redwood River, or Rud Rudewed River, excuse me, running through it. It is based off of Redwood. That's, that's kind of the idea. Since this is Table Island, it's different woods. Oakle City, Oak, Rudewed redwood that's that's where i'm getting the names from so we have elbridge city uh elm and birch and based on nadi vt levu fiji it's the hot spot for tourists looking for beautiful beaches and home to the one of the banquet isles gyms uh the elbridge city gym specifically which is a bug type gym and he's gonna have you compete in a bug catching contest as the island trial then you have elbridge bay uh this is based on nadi bay here you're going to find some pokemon including these fellas golby and Golup, which is the fish out of water pokemon it's based on a goby which sometimes will come out of water a little bit kind of cool a little bit based on mud skipper too it gets 
It's a ground type, has dry skin, hydration, and samrush. Uh, we have Aquisher, which evolves into Marquatic, which is the Kingfisher Pokemon. It's water flying type based on a Pacific Kingfisher. Look at that bird and tell me that ain't one of the most pretty birds you've ever seen in your life. I love Kingfishers. Plate Island is the next island. This is based on Gao Island in Fiji. Uh, you're going to have the Chai Reef Walk. So here there's going to be a lot of uh, like a sandbar that you're going to have to stop at to walk over to the island. And this is how you'll, you know, find some Pokemon like Corsola, Horsey, and even Sanoan Mantike and Cantonian Starmie, since you weren't able to get those back in Kinsora. We have the Chai Village, or Chi Village. Uh, I didn't really land on a pronunciation, so whichever you want. Uh, it is based on, oh, it's Chai, because China, because Plate Island, China Plates. <laughs> um, based on Vandra Vandra, Gao Island, Fiji. It's a small place, but it does have a gym. Uh, this gem is a fairy type gem. You're going to be asked to just help villagers with different tasks, such as bathing a Tauros in a mill tank, feeding a Torchic, and finding someone that's lost on Sarah Mountain. Sarah Mountain is based on the mountains of Gao Island. Uh, they tower over Plate Island, offer a stunning view. You're going to find a lot of Pokemon here, Mudbray, Nummel, Minior, Beldum, and Petalil, which is going to get a new evolution. Uh, it's going to get Cheerfill, the pom-pom Pokemon. It's based off these little guys, which are uh, called a sensitive plant, and they look like, it's like a little plant home pom-pom. So I thought, you know, we'd have Petalo get an evolution that's like a little cheerleader, right? That's adorable. It's Grass Fairy, and it'll get a hidden ability called Emotional Support, which is where allies cannot have their stats lowered. So you can lower the stats of Cheerfill, just not its allies. Then we have Glass Island. This is based on Tevuni Island in Fiji. Uh, we have one era town which is based on soma somo uh and tavuni uh yeah you're going to be able to go to the plasto Winera channel uh bevera shore and bottle volcano park bevera shore this is just a lovely little area based on the plastel uh or, or excuse me the coast of tavuni island kind of overlooking the uh it'll be overlooking the plastel Winera channel uh, you will find a new Pokemon here called Clawville, the Devil Crab Pokemon. It is Water Dark based on a Horned Ghost Crab. Saw this thing was like, has to be a Pokemon. And also, you'll find Wiglet there. Wiglet evolves into Wugtrio, which will now evolve into Hydrio, which is the Sea Dragon Pokemon, a Water Dragon type based on Hydra, Dragon Eels, and the dragon-like appearance of Eels. And it's the evolved form of Wugtrio. Uh, we have Bottle Volcano Park, and yeah, you're going to find it looks very pretty. That's a picture of the Bowuma National Park in Tavuni Island. That's what it's based on. Going to be able to find a lot of Pokemon here, including Harlacross, which will be a convergent to Heracross. It's based on a Harlequin Beetle, and yeah, it's the clown Pokemon. It's Bug Psychic. Then we have Bottle Volcano. It's uh, based on Mount T Tavuni. Uh, it's known for its bottle-like shape. And you're also going to find a gem inside here. It's the Psychic-type gem, Karavi. He's a coffee shop owner. And he's going to have you navigate your Pokemon. So you're going to be playing as your Pokemon across like a little obstacle course in the volcano. Very dangerous. Then we have Bowl Island, which is based on the island of Vanua Levu in Fiji. Uh, the first area, Woodner City, is going to be Savu Savu. And this is, or based on Savu Savu, it's a large city, popular destination, connects to uh, Woodner Jungle, and it has its own gem. This gem, a dragon type gem, the gem leader will be Ryuki, or Ryuki, you remember him. Ryuki is a musician who formerly ran the Melee City Gym in Alola. He's now come here and become a gem leader for the uh, Banquet Isles League. You must solve the gem puzzle, the classic one from Vermilion City that's in his gem, and then defeat him in a battle. His Pokemon are right now Turtonator, Drampa, and Hydreo. Then we get to the Woodner Jungle. This is based on the Flora Tropica Botanical Gardens in Savu Savu, and very colorful, beautiful botanical gardens. You're going to find a Pokemon here called Octropic. And this is the camouflage Pokemon. It's a psychic type based on octopus, specifically leaning into its uh, camouflaging properties. Then we get to Plastel Path. It's based on the Cross Island Road in Vanwa Levu. And as you're traveling along, you see a lot of Pokemon like Chadot, Squawkabilly, Bounceweet. Uh, you get to Plastel Town. And here you're going to be able to visit the Plastel Venera Channel Museum. 
and you'll learn about a legendary Pokemon that is said to live within the Plasto Winera channel. You can access the Plasto Winera channel right now. You won't be able to find the legendary Pokemon until a little bit later. But yeah, it's based on the Soma Soma Strait and Fiji. Colorful Reef, though much smaller than the one in Kinsora lies here. Uh, so, you know, it's a reef you could dive in. Not going to be the great Kinsoran Reef. And yeah, you'll be able to find Toporus after here. Uh, after the Banquet Isles League. But first, it's time to do that. But wait, you yeah, have a message from the professor. So he's discovered a huge detail about that ancient Taurus you happen to find at the end of, in the post-game of the main game. It seems this Pokemon can evolve by learning a move called Primal Power. It's a 90 base power move that uses the first type of the Pokemon and also uses whichever stat is higher between the attack or special attack stat, kind of like Shell Side Arm or Terra Blast. Now, it seems this Tyrant never learned this move, but the Professor managed to learn it. So now, just level it up now that it knows this move, and it'll evolve. So we have the ancient form of Tyrantrum, Dragon Dark, just like its Tyrant counterpart. That's what I imagine Tyrantrum was before the fossil restoration process. Uh, it is the, I don't know how to pronounce that word, is it Despo? Despot? I, I don't know, but it's that. Now you can take on the Gym Leader Forced. You know, you're doing the league now, so Gym Leader Force, that's your first opponent. He's going to use Vikable, Scizor, Crustle, Araquanid, Yamega, and his ace is Harlacross. Addy is going to use Fairy Types, Comfey, uh, Rabombi, Grimstall, Shinotic, Gardevoir, and Cheerfill. Karavi is going to use Psychic Types, Alolan Raichu, Slowking, Oranguru, Alakazam, Starmie, and his ace, Octropic. And Ryukui is a Dragon Type with como -O, Rampage, Turton, Drampage, excuse me, Turtonade, Alolan Exeggutor, Garchomp, and Hydreo. Okay, so now we have the legendary Pokemon Top Horus. This is the Guardian Pokemon's Dark Fairy. And it's based on the Dakuwaka, which is this little guy. It's like a shark god that is supposed to like protect the oceans and the animals of Fiji. Um, yeah, I, I imagine that this would kind of be like an addition to the Tapus, which would be pretty dang cool, I think. So it would be a, like a, a master of the Tapus and would have some kind of relation with them. I think that could be a lot of fun. Now we get to part two, the Hidden World. This is set in Fraza, which is a land based on Antarctica. The story here is that Professors Baobab and Coco have been working hard on their study of the ancient tyrant you found and have ultimately concluded it swam to Kinsora from Fraza, a largely unexplored frozen land at the bottom of the globe. You're sent here on an expedition to find out how an ancient Pokemon managed to live in a seemingly just completely frozen area. You're going to find four new Pokemon here, uh, and also 21 other forms. We'll get into them. Let's look at them all. So first off, Fraza, again, based on Antarctica. There's a picture of Antarctica if you didn't know what it was looked like, and you're you know watching and not listening. Uh, then we have the Fraza Snowfields. This is based on Antarctica. Again, the cold here is, well, very cold, but a few Pokemon have actually managed to survive here. So you're going to find Ice Q, Lapras, Satotl, Seal, Sfeel, Bergmite, and a Pokemon called Arctosaur and Amara, but a special Amara. So first, let's talk about Arctosar. This is the living fossil Pokemon. It is an ice dragon type. It's got ice body, slush rush, and snow cloak. It's based on a plesiosaur, and it is basically the full form of that Arcto Pokemon that you see in Arctovish and Arctozol. Then we have Amara. Amara's ancient form will be found here. It is an ice electric type. And yeah, it, and Aurorus, you can evolve it because they'll all learn that move that needs to be used to evolve then we have the hidden world uh based on the theories of the hollow earth or a hidden prehistoric world existing in the middle of antarctica this has been like a it's like a conspiracy theory it's like a tinfoil hat type thing uh, but basically some people think that the earth is hollow like and you can access it at the north or south pole and there's a paradise in there a lot of people think that like area zero is kind of based on this theory and uh like it's even been used in some stuff like i think marvel comics has like a savage land or i think it's called that. i think it's actually called the savage lands but like it's where dinosaurs still live in the middle of antarctica and it's like a preserved world but yeah so it's a preserved world in the middle of fraza and home to preserved life the hidden world may be the greatest discovery in the history of pokemon you're gonna find relicanth here but also all kinds of different forms of pokemon 
and new Pokemon. So we have Dracosaur, the living fossil. It's a dragon ground type. It's going to be based on a Stegosaurus, and it is the Draco part of the Dracovish and Dracozolt. So it's Dracosaur, and it's a Stegosaurus. We have Dynavish, which is the Vish part of Dracovish and Arctivish, and it is based on a Dunkelostus, and it's going to be water dark. Then we have Dinozolt. Dinozolt is going to be the Zolt part of uh, Dracozolt and Arctozolt. It's electric flying, and it's based on a Velociraptor. The uh, It's going to have static, volt absorb, and surge surfer. Then we have some ancient forms of Kabuto and Ammonite. Kabuto and Kabutops are going to be water bug. Ammonite and Amistar are going to be water psychic. Aerodactyl is going to be flying dragon, and it's going to have pressure on nerve and gale wings. Anorith is going to be bug water with battle armor and swift swim. Lilip and Cradley are going to be grass water and have suction cups and storm drain. We have... Uh, Crandos and Rampardos, they will now be pure psychic type Pokemon with Mold Breaker and Sheer Force. And we have Shieldon and Basiodon, which are going to be steel fighting with Sturdy and Soundproof. Then we have Arkin and Tortuga. Arkin and Archaeops will be Flying Grass and we'll still have Defeatus, but you know, if they want to give Archaeops a better ability and give this one at two, that would be awesome. Uh, and we have Tortuga and Carcosta, which are Water, Steel, and have Filter, Sturdy, and Swift Swim. Then we have Minic and Minmite. We're now going to be able to get the ancient forms of the fossils that you found in Kinsora. Uh, this will be Poison Steel, and Dibbit will be Steel Dark, uh, and they'll still have their same abilities. Battle Armor and Toxic Debris for Minic and Minmite, and Dibbit will still get, uh, and Dibruff will still get Parental Bond. So the plot of this is going to be that basically you discover this hidden world, and it's huge, but Professor Bob and Coco are kind of like oof because the Consora Council wants to claim this land as part of Consora and begin excavating the land for its minerals and this is not good because you found a preserved world where ancient Pokemon are still surviving there's no way you can mine it for its resources so you're going to have to challenge the Consora Council and after their defeat the Ether Foundation who have been working with the Cons have been working with Professor Coco uh, along with the Consortium Council, will all declare the hidden world as a protected land. So basically, only some people, you included, of course, are allowed to visit. Uh, and there's going to be very strict laws to protect the Pokemon there. So it'll be a nice, happy ending. And yeah, that is basically everything for the Consor region. Wow, this was a long video. Uh, if you've made it all the way here, type jelly beans in the comments below so I know you did, because that. You know, if you made it that far, you definitely, like, why would you say jelly beans unless I told you to, you know? But yeah, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. I'd love to make more of these regions, and if this does well, I absolutely will. Again, special thanks to SEH underscore Art Gold for the art in this video for Sea Pyre, The Starters, and Draquidile. Uh, thanks so much, man. Guys, be sure to go show them some love. Talk about how great his designs are in the comments below, because they are superb. That ostrich is peak. Might I add, I'd be picking the ostrich for sure. Let me know your teams, all kinds of fun stuff to discuss in the comments below. So do that. And until next time, I will see all of you later.